Nice, right? Uh, for the actors, what was it like working with Noah on this? This is, you know, his baby. Um, how is he? It's like? our baby now. Right. <laughs> he loves his baby. He's, I've never seen anyone have more fun with a role than Noah has with the librarian. I mean, it's, he's kind of a clown. He really is, right? That is yeah. the thing. Like, he never gets to do comedy, and we're like his little comedy break. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's amazing, too, when you walk into a new show, everyone's sort of feeling it out together, and we were all sort of on day one, page one. It was, you know, it's a nervous feeling, but Noah walked in, having played this character for years, and it really sort of gave us somewhere to go. Yeah. He, and he shoots so high, I think we all wanted to be as good as yeah. he was, and it, it pushed he, us. He really helped elevate yeah. the group. Uh, looking, uh, we're, we're, we're going to see more from the uh, show in a little while, but I did want to talk about what are some of the missions, uh, and this could be John or, or anyone here, that the... Um, we'll, we'll, we'll do each one of ours kind of favorite. Yeah. Uh, or, and I hopefully won't steal anybody, and, and we'll do it without spoilers. But, you know, the fun of this, like I said, was in the writer's room we said, okay, let us assume there's a magical history of the world that is running parallel that we don't know about, and also it's the Fun X-Files episode. So whatever high concept you have in your pocket, uh, I will genuinely say probably my favorite episode is the uh, science fair strangely infected with magic. <laughs> it is the prototypical X-Files. We go to a town, something weird is happening, and it is a high-end science fair, and there's a coven in the middle of it, and it's just one of those great, like, well, here are two juicy genre conventions, geeks and magic, bam, and <laughs> a great episode. Um, I would have to say my favorite. Want to answer that? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> My favorite comes with the soundtrack. Um, no, my favorite was um, when we get uh, we go to this odd little town again, and we get sucked into a fairy tale world. That is also a favorite of mine. <laughs> I, it's where fairy tales come to life in that yeah. episode is pretty special. Um, and my other favorite was our Christmas episode, believe it or not, which are usually kind of hokey, and this one, in my opinion, was not. I loved it. Well, it helps, well done, that, John it helps that we have, uh, well, you'll see. You'll see who plays Santa when we roll the guest star clip, but it, it helped have We a, do have a Santa. A really offbeat Santa. Santa. Yeah. You can't say who plays Santa? I want them to see it, because they're, they're going to they're gonna think it's cool. It's okay. Santa. <laughs> no one plays Santa. It just is Santa. <laughs> okay, you're doing it again. You're... Christian? Uh, oh, man. I tell you, well, those were two great ones right there. Those are my favorites as well. I, uh, I actually enjoy, I actually, this goes back to the Noah thing, too. I actually enjoy the, uh, the, the first two episodes. Uh, it was fun. Um, I've, I've known Noah for a long time, and I've seen some of his work. is just absolutely brilliant. But like John said, he doesn't get to do comedy that much, and he's so brilliant in comedy. And we really looked at him like our, uh, our Shatner, our, our Patrick Stewart. He was at the helm of this whole thing. He knew what he was doing. So he gets to come in, and there's a very great scene in the, in the, in the opening of the show where my character shows up. And I don't know if you guys know this, but this is also my sister. As, yes, uh, as our little we, backstory on, yeah, on Christian and on myself. King and Maxwell, we played brother and sister, which was a lot of fun. And, uh, and so she comes to, to rescue me from what I'm doing and tell me what I'm going to be doing for the, hopefully the next five years. Right, John? Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, and it was just fun because it was like, you know, we had to kind of forget. I had to kind of forget that we were brother and sister, and it was fun having Rebecca come get me and all that stuff. And we really got the dynamic of the character sort of in that scene, which, is, uh, which was great. And I really love the first two episodes. I do. And I love the other one. You took mine, actually. I, the, the Christmas episode is brilliant. We got, um, I don't know if you know, but we got Bruce Campbell. Oh, yeah, it's just uh, literally. We're going to hold for the... It's like he doesn't listen to you. It's God. all the talking points, man. God damn Oklahoma. <laughs> Nobody heard that. It was on the talking points. I was gonna, we were going to surprise him by showing the clip. I'm just joking. So we got uh, Bruce. We got Robert England, Freddy Krueger, and he does a great job as Santa Claus. Uh, Robert England is amazing in this show. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Nobody said it was on the talking points. Man. We did. It, it we was on the. the it, look, it's fine. That it's specific all right. The talking point was not on the avoid talking no, point. No, it was list. not. It was sure. just a little. We're gonna do a little surprise thing. It's okay. No, it's alright. Did just say it though. <laughs> did just say that. I'm gonna need a beer, yeah. please. John, 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 what do you think, buddy? Um, <laughs> Don't ruin anything. Um, you gonna be really careful here. Um. <laughs> My favorite episode was the, oh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. 
I, would I like go the with Christmas don't episode. Say it. As well. <laughs> don't say it. Kemp, don't I say it. Go with don't say I would it. get off the Christmas episode, bro. I, I think it was no. I think it was great. Um, it was great because uh, as an actor, um, one of my favorite movies growing up, uh, not particularly for the acting, was uh, Home Alone. Dodgeball. And, and Dodgeball. <laughs> uh, and and I'd never seen Santa before, so it was kind of cool to see Santa. Um, so yeah, I had um, I had a lot of fun working that episode. Uh, the sets were amazing. It looks great and. Um, I guess Wait, just out of curiosity, what were you going to say, just in number-wise? Last one? Four. Oh. Am I allowed to... Yeah, oh yeah, the, uh, there's, uh, it, it's, it's, there's a mysterious maze. They can figure out what's in the maze. Okay, all right. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but there's a lot of... It, actually, you know what, uh, and I will say... About that, right? Yeah, we can. Um, there's, um, well, it's fun because a lot of, the, a lot of it was, it, since it's a parallel world of magic, how do we take magic and we glom it onto how it would actually exist now? How would people use it? How would people hide it? Uh, I always hate the things where like the normal world's over here and you go through a portal and the magical world's over here. No, if you had access to magic, you would cheat and you would use it. And that episode, uh, there's a minotaur and a maze. And so you need cool. people into it for power. You know, and it's a, it was a lot of fun like figuring out exactly like, okay, we want this great monster. We want this great, what, what's the setting we can put it in? You, what, why, do you, why is that one your favorite? Cause I like running. I think. <laughs> oh, you guys run a lot. Well, that one. The one. There is. By the way, this Minotaur was eight feet tall. It was some of the best, uh, the best, the best uh, work I've ever seen done on a creature. Yeah, we had Tyler Maine, uh, who played Cy uh, Sabretooth yeah. in the first yeah. X Men movie, as as the yeah. Minotaur. Yeah. That was pretty fun. And, there, and there's a there's a scene that you that you won't see, because Rebecca's character is. I'm sorry. Rebecca's character is very strong. She's a very strong character, and it's so great to see a woman like that on just, TV, just, just very clarify, strong. But I got to tell you. I play their guardian. I yeah. play their bodyguard. Right. Yeah. No. So there's the scene where the actual Minotaur shows up, and he bangs on the door, and Rebecca let out this ungodly scream because it's scary. Because the thing scared. is scary. But it was the funniest thing in the world. We're all, like, in the scene, and he, we didn't know he was coming. We didn't know he was going to make it all the way there, and he bangs on the door, and it's a glass the door, and the she door. just <laughs> screams. It scared all of us. Head. I don't know if it was a minute or her scream, but it was great. It wasn't acting. Giant we bullet head in the screamed. window, like yeah. No, it was good prosthetic. Terrifying. It was work. <laughs> really was. We had fun. I think we had. So so basically, Rebecca, the idea is take your running, give it to John. Yes. That is more running for him, Note less for, for you. Okay. Two, good to know. Please. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Rich. Hi. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> we were doing a panel and stuff over here. <laughs> it's fine. Less work for me. Yeah. Um, so. To get a sense, to give the audience a sense of who everyone is, so Rebecca, you just said you're the, the guardian, um, and we see that that you're sort of meet cute with uh, Noah's character um, in this scene, and he recruits you into this. But why don't you tell us a little bit, just quickly, about your character, and then if you guys can each tell us, because you all are recruited into this group because you've got a special ability. Terrorism expert, for, yeah, for NATO. Uh, so I'm a counterterrorism expert, uh, Colonel Eve Baird for the Army, and I fall into this role inadvertently. Um, I, I receive this magical invitation to the library, and I don't know what it's about, and um, I don't even know if I want the job, and I sort of, I get selected for it. And, uh, I mean, is that... Yeah, no, that's right. It, it's, it's essentially, um, the, the, to, to catch us up, because it is relevant, we did the three movies. And the premiere of the show on December 7th is exactly 10 years after the first movie premiered, which is cool. It's, it's why one of the reasons we really busted our ass to get the show up in time, because we wanted that anniversary. But in theory, you have not seen that character in seven years. And we wanted to do it in real time. So he said, well, in, he'd probably have gone crazy by this point, which Noah loved. So it's essentially he should have someone working with him. He hasn't had someone working with him. And something really bad starts happening. And the library, to a great degree, forces a new bodyguard slash common sense carrier onto him, and that's Colonel Eve Baird. I know the genre is unfamiliar with the idea of a mysterious guy familiar with the unknown with a female companion grafted onto him. <laughs> so I realize it's a little big for you to wrap your heads around. Uh, but yes, it, the fun of us is basically the woman's the kick-ass action hero and the guy is always the one who's kind of falling off cliffs and stumbling down elevator shafts and stuff because he's all distracted. He's also trying to lose me for the whole first Yeah, time. the whole first show he's basically he not like, not there. now! Yeah. Uh, but they wind up in a mystery, be and the great thing is, uh, you know, Eve is, uh, Colonel Eve Baird is an investigator. She hunts people, she hunts things. It's the skill set he doesn't have. He solves mysteries 
of a magical nature, but he's not good at just straight up investigating, which is the engine by which you build a weekly show. And uh, so when he finds himself with a mystery he can't solve, she's the key to figuring out what's actually going on. And so that's how they're glommed together to eventually wind up recruiting the three of them. And uh, Lindy, tell us about uh, Cassandra and what's her special ability. Um, I play Cassandra Killian, and she has also, she's been recruited by the library because she has a very special skill set. Uh, Cassandra is a synesthete, which is a real thing. It means that her uh, senses are all sort of crosswired, so instead of seeing numbers, she sees colors, she smells things, instead of hearing science, um, everything is crossed in her brain. And she's always viewed this as a curse. And when she meets Flynn for the first time, she sees that this could be a blessing. And she's finally found people who sort of accept her, and not only accept her, but need her and can use her skill set, which was not a skill set she thought she even had. Her, her, where she fits, I'm, I'm going to talk with a little bit. Uh, when you're putting together a team is the different skill sets you need to solve magical mysteries. And she's basically your science and math factor. Uh, she's based on Richard Feynman, actually, who Richard Feynman was a synesthete, and he often would say, I don't know how people do it without seeing the colors or numbers. And so we took that, uh, took it, expanded it, and built it up in the magical version of that. So basically, each person has kind of their specialty. And these guys are the librarians in training. We come to discover in the first episode that, that the librarians' lives are all in danger, and the, if the librarian, a.k.a. Flynn Carson, Noah Wiley's character gets killed off, these are going to, the follow-ups, and, and their lives are in danger. So we're, I'm here to protect them as well as Noah's character. Yeah. Christian? Uh, I, play, I play Jake Stone, and uh, he's, uh, he's an Oklahoma boy. Uh, yeah, had to, had to stretch on this role. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, he's just, he's, 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 from, uh, he's from a blue-collar family. And uh, he uh, he is very smart, and he is uh, he loves art history. He loves anything about history, and coming from from his neck of the woods, that's not something that you really put out there a lot. So he's kind of been um, under the covers, I guess, with uh, with uh, with his with his ability to 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 know all this stuff. And uh, and so it's fun. And 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 I want to say I want to say also this: it's not it's what's fun about this is we know who we are. We know what characters we're playing. But we're getting to take this journey, each and every one of us. Noah knows his character. But so when we, when we sit up here and, we, and we're trying to find the words for our character, it's because we're trying to find it on the show. We don't know what we're doing. We got thrown into all the, uh, neither, none of us up here on this panel knew what magic was. And all of a sudden, we're thrown into something where it's like, hey, magic is real. You're like, God, you're kidding me. And we're seeing it firsthand. And so it's what's fun about this and what John's been so great about is that you get to take these, this journey with us. We're still on this journey. I don't, I don't know where any of this is going because we've all been thrown into this. And that's what, what's great about John. If you know John Rogers as a writer, he takes the audience on this journey with us. And so that's what's great about this first season is you actually, get to, you actually get to learn all this stuff as we're learning about it. I mean, we're still trying to find not our characters, but we're still trying to find our way in the library. And you get to go with us on that. And I, th I just think that's brilliant. And, and, and it's, it's going to be a fun ride. I I, w I will admit, just before we get to John, that it, that's one of the things that sets the show aside. I kind of hate the show. I don't hate the shows. There's a lot of shows I love. But there's a convention to burn it out in the pilot where, welcome to the magical world. This is weird. All right, I'm ready. And they just, you've missed that entire process. Like when I did Blue Beetle with Jaime Reyes, with, with, with Keith Giffen, the whole thing. The whole, the whole first year was, holy crap, I have superpowers. It would take you a year to adjust to that. Uh, you would not just go and you know, join the Justice Society and start punching Wildcat. And, and to a great degree, the fun of this is, let's take what they usually do in the pilot and take the entire year to process their emotions as their lives change, as they learn to trust each other and themselves. And, and it's great. You've got great actors, so they'll, you're doing the emotional work, and, and so the characters feel real in an unreal setting. And the episodes are all standalone episodes, but there is also a through line that connects an overall story throughout the yeah. season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It wraps up very nicely. John? <laughs> Thank John you. John Rogers. Thank you. John Kay, why don't you tell us about Ezekiel? Um, so I play Ezekiel Jones, and Ezekiel is trouble. Um, <laughs> he is the rascally little thief. Um, he kind of doesn't really have much of a purpose besides the fact that if he sees something and he wants it, he'll take it, and um, it doesn't matter if it's illegal or if it belongs to somebody. Um, but 
within the group, I think uh, he finds working with a team as a new sort of uh, experience. And um, I find personally growing up, um, I can relate that to a lot of uh, experiences I had. Uh, and um, I feel like Ezekiel and I kind of, we share a lot of um, common qualities. Um, so uh, as far as the character goes, um, he provides a bit of entertainment. Um, he's cheeky. And uh, amongst the group, he represents the side of yourself that sometimes has to do something that's not morally great, but sometimes you have to do it to get the job done. So, And each, each character, to a great degree, and again, characters are lenses through which you tell stories, you know, Cassandra is crippled and ashamed of her gift. Jacob hides his gift. Ezekiel wastes his gift. And so, to a great degree, the arc of the show is each one of them learning to deal with their place in the world. And the, and the great thing about this, too, a lot, another fun thing about this is that we're all thrown into this, and it's not like, hey, let's just see how this works. We're thrown into it, and it goes 90 miles an hour with our hands on fire yeah. right off the bat. And it's funny, without us even knowing, we're becoming a family. And it's just that's kind of a, a really great underlying thing that I love about this show. Well, you've all done a great job of explaining your characters, and uh, now we've got a little video that we can give the uh, audience a taste of what they look like on screen. Ooh. I want to take a quick moment before we hop to guest stars, because John Larroquette, we haven't talked about at all. You are you looking at my sheet? I was not looking at your sheet. Uh, Very next question. He's not here today, but John Larroquette is on your cast. And can you explain what his role is on the show? Sure. Being um, awesome. Being awesome. Generally being awesome. There are definitely days every single one of us are like, I'm standing next to John Larroquette. Mm -hmm. uh, he plays uh, Jenkins. He plays, due to the misfortunes of the first two episodes that we won't spoil, uh, the librarians are forced to go on the run, and he plays the equivalent of Bob Newhart's character in a different location. Uh, unfortunately, Bob can't uh, re uh, work regularly, so uh, John Locker comes in, and he's great because uh, we really wrote him as the, gar as the guy who's your guide to the magical world who loathes every moment you're in his presence. <laughs> and very few guys can do that like John Larroquette, where he's just unpleasant to you and super funny and you still love him. And what's really great is he, he just, he, he took a, we just kept writing the character bigger and bigger as the show went on because he just really filled it out. And he's actually got a great arc over the course of the season. And I really love the fact that each of the individual characters has a very distinct relationship with him. Uh, but he, he's a pleasure to work with. Every single day you work with him, he's fantastic. And you mentioned Bob Newhart, and Bob and Jane Curtin reprised their roles from the original movies. Um, was it, why was it important to you to have them in this? Because the movies are what launched it. I mean, the movies still get great audience. The movies are what sell internationally. And, and for me, you always want to, whenever you create something new, you want to make sure you respect what you're building off of. And we wanted to make sure that we didn't just say, oh, yeah, those characters are gone now. That didn't seem cool. So we really moved hell and high water to get everybody because Jane was on another show. We actually shot her scenes the last two days of the show that appear in the first two episodes. We just left a blank spot in the show until we could get her. Uh, Bob, we wound up shooting some special footage. And so, it, it, look, I, I think people are emotionally attached to those characters, and you should honor them and give them the proper handshake uh, before you move on. And by the way, they might come back. You know, it really was a matter we put the show together so fast we couldn't clear everybody's schedule up for this year. But there's an excellent chance those characters will be back. And speaking of coming back, uh, I know Noah has a big part in the first night. Will we see him on screen? Will we see Flynn again? In Absolutely. He's in several episodes. We, uh, we bracketed his shooting schedule so we could work around his other commitments. Uh, so we shot the episodes he'll be in in the middle of the season at the end, along with the finale. So essentially, he has a separate arc where we explain why he isn't in every episode, because he's off doing a very large magical job. And then he checks in and comes sort of goes back in and out. Even, and, uh, when he, even when he's not in the episode, he's still there. He's yeah. still alive he's in still the episodes. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, we never, we never just part. drop it. A lot of times we're talking about what he's doing. We're talking about the framework of the investigation. It, it is much more just, oh, he's not, he's not on screen today, but it's still leading the library team. Um, and 
earlier, Christian let a little spoiler out yeah. uh, about a guest star. Well, you're going to see it on the screen anyway. It's, yeah, no, no. But um, <laughs> we'll pretend we've already forgotten that. And we're going to show a clip now where we get to see who some of the guest stars on The Librarians are going to be. That's a pretty good roster, actually. Not that bad. is very cool. Um, what can you tell us about some of those guest stars? Who, who are they playing? Well, Bruce Campbell's on the show. <laughs> I understand why I'm in trouble. You were going to see it anyway. Anyway. All right. <laughs> oh, stop. Stop it. Stop it. Oh, look, he's playing to you. Don't even. Don't give it to him. Just saying, he's just, like, he's I doing was, this, I I, like, he's so doing like, this, so when he, when he wants to jump in front of a car again or do some other stupid <laughs> damn stunt, he's like, well, that time on the panel, you made me real sad, you gotta let me jump off <laughs> You gotta let me jump off of something on fire now, look at that. Man. Um, yeah, Bruce, Cam Bruce Campbell's on. Uh, <laughs> fanta fantastic Santa, really great, very kind of, uh, it's a really unique uh, vision of it. It's fantastic. He does, he's a really great serious actor. There's some really great sad moments in the episode that he just murders. You know what was really fun to have was Bex. Yeah. Super fun. She's really cool. I mean, I'd never worked with her before. A couple of people had worked with her, and she's she kind of, she's just adorable, and she's super smart, and she fell, she's a giant geek. She's like a real, a real uh, giant geek genuinely one of the tribe and she didn't want to leave when she saw the set she's like i want to be on the show where we fight magic every week why can't i be here I'm like well if people respond to your character maybe you'll come back so learn your lines no um <laughs> matt frewer plays our recurring villain uh he is yeah matt matt's recurring um he's in quite a few episodes yeah. he's yes. amazing i got reunited with my dad from dawn of the I dead know, that so that was very exciting for me hey. The, uh, he, Not quite as lovable as he was in Dawn of the Dead, though. No, he's very, no, he's, he's very cruel. He's um, mean. Yeah. So, well, sorry. Yeah. Well, those of you that don't know, that's Max Headroom. Yeah. And it's so strange to work with him because every once in a while, I expect his head to do something in auto tune. To, and but he's absolutely brilliant. He really amazing. is. Amazing. No, he's he is the leader of the conspiracy, which basically is the mystery that Noah can't quite crack, and then needs uh, Rebecca's character to help figure out. And then as it unravels. Uh, things go horribly wrong. He's a really great nemesis. He's a great nemesis character uh, in general. Uh, uh, he just has a presence to him, and uh, we pay a, off a great arc. Was, there's little hints we drop through the season that if you're paying attention, I always like when the audience gets there about a minute and a half before you do, because if they've been paying attention, you're rewarded by the fact, like, I know who he is. And then, you know, so, so I'll, I'll be, I will be pleased to watch the Twitter feeds and see if, how far ahead of us you guys get. Don't feel dumb if you don't get no. it. <laughs> you know what? I, you can never outwit an audience. I hate when people are like, oh, we kept the audience buffalo. Then you probably lied to them. Because audiences are really smart. And if you play fair with them, they will get ahead of you. Probably so. smarter than us because we didn't see it coming. I didn't see it coming. <laughs> You're busy learning lines and running around That's and stuff. That's true. Running around too much. Again, I understand. All right, we're, we're going to open up to audience questions in a minute. Um, uh, but before we do one thing, since you mentioned Twitter, the feed for the show is librarians TNT, um, and the hashtag the librarians. Um, and before we get to the questions, there's an interesting innovation for the fans. Oh yeah, uh, that you've got called a 360 camera footage. I don't know if it's got an official fancy name yet, but 
Um, we've got a clip. Well, it's, it's camera footage shot in 360, so right. we're experimenting with a few things. 360 okay. camera footage seems pretty good. Um, yeah, I think it's IM 360. The idea is it's some behind the scenes stuff. You know, we're always trying to open up the, the space so people can explore the show, um, look for hidden stuff on the website that might lead you to little links that tell you about the plot lines, that sort of thing. Uh, but this, TNT came, and so we got this cool piece of technology. It's a 360 degree camera that they put in different spaces in the set that then create a virtual environment that you can use in a program or a tablet. So the idea is you will be able to load up the sets, the locations for the show, and as you move your tablet and uh, phone around, you will be looking around the set. If you walk forward, you will walk forward through the set. It, it creates a virtual space you are standing in that then you can do watch. And also on your laptop, uh, by scrolling, you can go and take a tour, a virtual tour of the set. And on your control, not ours, basically. Yeah, and we've got a little clip to uh, show you what it's all about. Yeah. This is not... Okay, um, are there fan questions? I, these lights are blinding me, but are, are there any fan questions? Um, well, we have... Uh, oh, there we are. Okay. Uh, did you want to come up to the mic over here? There's a line. Oh, where's the oh the lineups over there? Sorry, I just one announcement. If you guys do come up to um, may ask a question, please bring your belongings. Do not leave them at your seat because there are stuff. People are taking stuff. So bad. Oh. Ezekiel Jones is right here. <laughs> Watch out for that guy. Wait, a harsh our geek buzz. That's not cool. Um, I have a question.